Artificial intelligence has become so advanced, it has now surpassed human performance on several basic tasks. That's according to the AI Index report published by the Institute for Human-Centered Artificial Intelligence at Stanford University. The report says AI beat humans on tasks like reading comprehension and image classification. It also says the technology has also made workers more productive and that AI is advancing scientific discovery. Russell Wald is the deputy director for that institute. He joins me now in, in the studio. Thanks very much for being here. Thanks for having me. So um, give me a sense of the pace. AI is now able to outperform humans. Is that faster than we expected? And what does it tell us about the speed of AI going forward? It certainly is faster than we expected uh, in terms of pace itself. But it's even more so that we have to now establish new benchmarks because it's continually changing and we can't keep up. And that gap just keeps closing faster and faster. Now, that's what really fascinates me, the idea of benchmarks. Is this, why do we need new benchmarks? We need to know if it's actually doing what it, uh, it, it claims it can do. And we, if you're going to measure against what human capability is, that's going to be needed. So image classification for a long time has already been exceeded by uh, AI. But there's other areas of reading comprehension, mathematic comp uh, uh, comprehension, and things like this. So if you need, to, you need to be able to see what it is in comparison to the human. And, and what I wonder is, I, when I've talked to some people who are involved in creating these systems, they say that, that depending on the amount of compute power, that there may be a time, and in fact, they may be there already, where AI shows them what it can do. But they're not always sure. That's why benchmarks intrigued me, because they're not even sure what AI can do until it does it which makes it sound like the horse is going to be well out of the barn in some instances before the, the door could close if you wanted it to. We are constantly surprised by uh, this level of what uh, the performance is and what comes from this. And this is from experts in the field for years. One interesting anecdote, if I could offer that, is uh, in 2017, Google spent $930 on their transformer model to, to train that. Go to five years, fast forward five years, and you have what uh, is cost $200 million for Google to train its Gemini Ultra. So when you mentioned the compute power, this is just exceeding dramatically in order to give those significant gains that you're seeing. What, what is your sense of, um, you know, the number of people who have control over these systems is relatively small. It's in a pretty uh, small group of hands. There have been more AI pieces of legislation, the report says, I believe, than ever before in this Correct. year. How's that balance, though? Legislation which seeks to over, oversee this and then the fact that it's really in the hands of a pretty small group of people. It is in the hands of a few select people. And legislation might make a difference, but what's going to make the bigger difference is public sector investment by the government actually putting the resources in this so that it's not just within that limited set. You have different stakeholders, academics, nonprofit research these uh, type of scientific things that you would get, like uh, the internet or GPS. These are things that are later commercialized but developed in the nonprofit sector. So is the idea to just get more people involved in the process that that, that to, broadens the pool? Yeah, to uh, widen the pie a little bit more so that you have different stakeholders at the table and we ensure that it's just not one small set that's working on these frontier models. What to you are the next stages and when does it get frightening. For some people, it is already frightening. Uh, for uh, me, I'm very optimistic because on some fronts, if, if, if ushered well into society, uh, they can increase productivity, have a much uh, in influence on helping humanity and a lot of uh, possibilities. Uh, but uh, when people say it gets scary, the difficult part for that for me is, is you want to measure against what human cognition is, what the human brain is. We don't know that ourselves yet. So how do we know where the, the machine level is at that point? So we often hear about AGI, which is artificial general intelligence. That's a tough one to, it depends on what your definition is, because what can humans do? We don't know completely what we can do. And is artificial general intelligence, when that is achieved, this is the seventh year you've been putting out this index? Correct. Will the index, when artificial general intelligence is found, will it say, well, they're like us? Uh, the first question, uh, part of that question is if it's achieved. Yes, right. Uh, I don't know if it will be achieved, again, because we don't know what, human, what the level of humans can do in this particular space. 
However, if we look at the technology to augment human capability, that's one of the most fundamental important parts. And we actually show this in the report, that there are elements of where you're seeing that when uh, paired with a human, we actually see increases in productivity, quality, uh, uh, speed of, of what's coming from this. So we need to think of it more as augmenting human capability, not replacing not humans. Excellent. Russell Wald, thank you so much for being with us with the Stanford Institute for Human-Centered Artificial Intelligence.